wherever you are just lift up the voice and begin to praise his name in the name of Jesus lift up the voice Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4 come on somebody lift up your voice don't stop lift up your voice Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4 the Bible says at this time you will say praise the Lord amen and therefore wherever you are begin to praise the Lord and I'm lift up your voice somebody lift up your voice and begin to praise the Lord we can have a so kapaya na be 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 Hey, huh? We're just going to praise the Lord. The Bible says, thank him for his soul. Tell all the nation about his great thing that God has done. Tell them that he's very great. Amen. Lift up the voice and begin to thank God. Uh, God is very great. Amen. And his love endures forever. His mercy towards us never failed. Uh, come on, somebody lift up your voice uh, and begin to pray. Uh, begin to thank God somebody. Open up your mouth uh, and begin to thank God somebody. Uh, come on, somebody lift up your voice. Uh, Come on, verse number five says, uh, Six songs to praise the Lord uh, because He has done the wonderful things. Uh, come on, somebody lift up your voice. Uh, God has done the wonderful things in our lives. Uh, and therefore, this morning, if we're here, uh, begin to thank Him for the wonderful things that He has done for us, uh, for bringing us here. Uh, but come on, somebody, uh, open up your mouth and praise Him. Uh, lift up the voice. Uh, Lift up the voice, somebody, and praise him. The Bible says he has done a wonderful thing for us. Come on, somebody, God has done a wonderful thing for you. Come here this morning. It's by the grace of God. Come on, we did not hear any bad news. We did not hear any accident. You are alive for her. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. He and Kataya Dayana Dana Bakayaba. He and Turia Payaraba, say another Baraba. He and Rabaya Bayaba. Yet he ever look here, son Talaba de Villegreva. Yet he ever look here, son Talaba de Villegreva. Yet he ever look here, son Talaba. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. Open up your mouth for him, praise him. He cannot have a sick baby. Come on, some 100. Let's not go to Forsyth. I will enter his game with Thanksgiving. And therefore, enter the spirit with joy and Thanksgiving. Lift up your voice, somebody. The stop of her. He cannot have a baby. 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 He cannot have a sick and a barabara, Rantapayanaba, Rantayanaba, 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 they are tired of the Kimmy in the Bay. They can't tire about who you are not a Bayaba. They can't have a Baba. 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 They can't have
Come on, somebody, uh, see how for the Lord has brought us. Uh, lift up your voice, uh, magnify his name, uh, praise his name, somebody. Uh, open up your mouth. Uh, come on, somebody. Come on, 
in the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 12. The Bible says, I will be kind to them. I will forgive them for their wicked things that they have done. I will not continue to think about their sin. This is what the Lord says. Amen. So this is what the Lord said concerning you this morning. The Bible says, I will, the Lord said, I will not think about your sins. Amen. And therefore, we are praying, telling Jehovah God, the Father, this morning, have mercy on us. Even though your word has come to fall, but we know that we are not righteous. We know that we are not clean, but let your glory wash away our sin, and so that your face will turn from our sin, so that your glory will fall upon us, so that your glory will rest upon us. This one, in the name of Jesus. And therefore, if we are watching that this morning, begin to lift up your voice one more time, and say, Father, have mercy on me this morning. Father, show me mercy this morning. Huh? In the name of Jesus, huh? lift up the voice and begin to pray. Huh? <laughs> Right this morning, I'm 
Verse number 31, the Bible says NIV version. After they were, after they prayed, the place the place they were still the, the place they were meeting was shaking, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God boldly. Amen. Amen. After the Bible says after they were praying, after they prayed, uh, the place they were having the meeting, the Bible says that place was shaking, uh, and they were boldly the battle, the Holy Ghost began to move in our midst, uh, and they begin to speak. The word of God boldly. Uh, to this one we are praying, telling Jehovah God, uh, the Father, let your spirit fill this place. Uh, yes, so that if you mark on this pulpit, uh, we can sing boldly, uh, we can minister boldly, uh, we can dance boldly. Uh, you see, most of the people will come to the house of God uh, and all they say you can't dance uh, because you are shy. Uh, but when the spirit of God will lead upon your life, uh, you begin to you be the first person to run on the in the front uh, and begin to lift up your hand, you begin to run and uh, begin to dance. Uh, see, the reason why most of us we can't pray, uh, because we don't carry the Holy Spirit. Uh, so our shadows begin to take place. Uh, the fear in us begin to take place. Uh, but when we have the Spirit of Jehovah God, uh, when we read the Bible, the book says in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, uh, when God spoke to us, Zerubbabel, uh, it's not by mind. Uh, but when my Spirit fell upon you, uh, you begin to encounter signs and wonders. Uh, and therefore this one, if we are here, uh, as we are about to pray and ask Jehovah God, uh, that for Father, let your spirit move. Uh, yes, this one, I cannot do this way without you. Uh, yes, this one, I can't dance without you. Yes, uh, I can't sing without you. Uh, yes, I, I cannot do anything without you. Uh, and therefore, let your power, uh, let your spirit uh, begin to move this place. Uh, begin to shake in this place. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, the Bible says uh, they were all gathered in one place. Uh, they didn't gather in one in the clubhouse. Uh, they didn't gather in nowhere. Uh, but they gathered in the house of God uh, and that means when you come to the house of God uh, something happened uh, you see you can counter God online uh, but when you come to the house of God uh, it's different encounters all together uh, it's different experiment together uh, it's different spirit moving together uh, and therefore this morning uh, if we are here uh, lift up the voice uh, and say oh Lord uh, let your power uh, let your spirit uh, fill this place uh, right now uh, right now uh, right now uh, Lift up the voice and begin to pray. Come on, open up yourself and allow yourself. The Father, lose me now. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, 
For God to use them, God should use them to bless us this morning uh, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray for them. Uh. Open up your mouth in the next one minute. Uh, in the next one minute, begin to pray for them. Uh, the Father, your word say, after they prayed, uh, the place they were having the meeting, uh, begin to shake uh, and they begin to speak boldly. Uh, and therefore, we enforce your word uh, uh, right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, we pray for our Sunday school teachers. Uh, Father, let them speak your word boldly. Uh, let them speak your word boldly. Uh, in the name of Jesus, begin to thank God somebody for answering our prayers. Uh, thank God for answering our prayers. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for everything you've done for us. Father, your word says in Acts chapter 4, verse number 31. After they prayed, signs and wonders begin to happen. And therefore, we have prayed that let your signs and wonders happen whilst we are about to hear the word of God. Father, we pray and sanctify everything in the blood of Jesus. We thank you and let all believers and those online say amen. 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 Good morning, kingdom citizens. Aha, uh -huh. amen. I like that whoever is clapping, you caught the revelation, amen. We're no longer kingdom members, but citizens, amen. Amen. And before we get started, I want you to turn to somebody and say, God bless you. Actually, walk up to somebody, shake their hands and say, God bless you. Aha. Uh -huh. I want you to find one more person and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to say to yourself, I am blessed. I am wonderful. And I am increasing in the knowledge of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. I want us to give a round of applause for our virtual family. Amen. Our virtual kingdom citizens. Amen. Oh, come on. We can do better. <laughs> Amen. Glory unto Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for yet another time in your presence. Father, we come to you as kingdom citizens. We say thank you, O Lord. We worship you as Sunday is the first day of the week. We are here to give you the first, O God, of our week. And we say thank you for preservation power. We thank you for taking us throughout the nocturnal hours safe and sound, O God. We thank you for traveling mercies, O God. For those that are on the way, those that are watching, and those that are here, O God, we say thank you. We thank you for the life of our mama and our papa, O God. Lord, as we go into your word this morning, Holy Spirit, we ask your presence to be here, O God. To teach us, open up our eyes of understanding of the ways of the kingdom, O God. May we learn about Jesus through his word, O God. Father, open up our eyes of understanding. We submit our will to your will, O God. We cannot do this without you. We ask that your spirit would teach us all the ways of the Father. Father, I submit myself underneath the graces of our mama and our papa, oh God. Holy Spirit, let this be a moment where we learn about your word. And may this word transform our mind into kingdom citizens, oh God. We come against every spirit of hindrance, every spirit of distraction. We bind it now in the name of Jesus. Father, let your presence dwell in this place. Lord, give me the tongue of a minister to minister at everyone's understanding, oh God. We say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Someone say amen. 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 You all look handsome and beautiful. God bless you. Let us give a round of applause for ourselves. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our Papa, Apostle Dominic Osei and Prophetess Leslie Osei, we welcome you to Sunday's Bible studies. Amen. Now, by show of hands, how many of you brought something to write with? Okay. I like this. Amen. Amen. So let's use it this year. Amen. Because this year we are learning, we're, we're diving into the word. Amen. You may all have your seats, please. God bless you. Very quickly, let's do a, a, a synopsis. I need somebody. I'm going to pick on somebody. On Wednesday, we started a, a topic on first fruit. Understanding what first fruit is. Amen. And as you all, we, we received the word of the Lord this year that this is the year of kingdom influence and takeoff. Amen. And this year, by the grace of God, our papa and our mama, they're going to teach us about the ways of the kingdom. Amen. For many people, they may not know what, how the kingdom operates or how a kingdom on earth operates. Amen. So this year, I truly, you know, want to encourage all of us to really take the word of God very, very serious. Amen. And have that desire to want to learn about the kingdom. Amen. Because as our father said on Sunday, it's hard when most of us, you know, spent majority of our lives in a democratic uh, um, country. So now the teaching, when it's coming, it will, it will debacle some things in your mind. It will challenge your thoughts. But I pray that you will submit your thoughts to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So that way we can learn what the true kingdom of God is and how it functions. Amen? Amen. Amen. So who was here on Wednesday? Raise your hands. Okay, who watched on Wednesday? Bible studies. Aha. Uh -huh. Brother Michael, tell us what you learned about first fruit. What revelation did you catch about first fruit? He's right there. I learned that it's a command. Mm -hmm. command for us to give us a first fruit. Who commanded us to, to adhere to that? It started in the Old Testament. Um, I forgot the exact place, but I think it was uh, for the uh, Israelites, and they were commanded to give a fresh fruit. So it, it, it came into the New Testament too. Amen. So it started in the Old Testament. Amen? All right, I'll take one more. Let's see here. Let's go. Someone had their hands up back there. Our sister right there, please. Did you have your hands up? Yes, we, yep. Um, on Wednesday, we learned that the first fruit is used to honor God. Mm -hmm. um, and that... Yeah, it's used to honor God, yeah. Okay, amen, we'll take that. It's used to honor the Lord. Would you like to add something? 
Our sister right there, please. Good morning. Good morning. On Wednesday, you said first fruits is like an insurance policy. Um, so Nehemiah 13, um, 31. Um, if we read that, and also you said that you are judged if you touch the first fruit. Mm. Um, you're judged by God if you touch the first fruit. Amen. 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 Round of applause for everybody. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So this year, we, we, we talked about something that I want us to apply every Sunday, every Bible study. Amen. I want us to, when we're having this conversation, to talk about context and bring a revelation, what revelation comes to you, and also to how you interpret what we're learning. Amen? I believe if we follow these three components, it'll help our conversations even deeper. Amen? So context, revelation, and interpretation. Amen? 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 Yes. Hallelujah. So today we're still going to continue the conversation on kingdom approach to first fruit. Amen? Now understand this, that the Lord, the king, now we're going to be using certain phrases so our mind, we start to train our mind about kingdom. The king owns everything. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 24 verse 1. And I'll take the New King James Version. Excuse me, the NLT. And it says, the earth is the Lord's. And everything thereof and its people belong to him. Amen. So we understand that the king owns everything, including the people. As we heard last Sunday, our papa taught us that in the kingdom, the citizens don't own anything. They lease properties. They lease things. Amen. That the king owns everything, including the people. And the king has an economy of, its, of his own. That the citizens, if you want to partake of it. Now, understand what I'm saying here. That when a law is given by a king, it must be adhered to. Amen. But we know not everybody listens. Can we agree to that? Because the king may not know what you're doing in your home. But the king that we're talking about, he knows your heart. This king... Loves you and I so much that he has given us an economy, a plan to partake in his wealth. And some of these systems that he has put in place, for example, first fruit is a system. Tithing is a system. Offering is a system. Amen. And many other given opportunities is a system for you to partake into the, into the wealth of the kingdom. And we understand that everything belongs to the king. The Bible said that when the children of Israel, when you are the firstborn, it belongs to God. That child must serve in the house of the Lord all the days of their lives. And we see that with Hannah and, 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 and Samuel. Anna cried out and the Lord blessed him and gave Samuel back to him. So everything in the kingdom belongs to the king. Once we have that understanding, we now, we become a proper kingdom um, um, citizen. That if the king has declared and decreed something, say, bring your first of everything. It belongs to me anyways. We do it because, one, we honor the Lord and we walk in obedience of the king. And we'll dive in here shortly. Amen? Now, historically, crops and livestock were the currency of the Israelites in the Old Testament. This is what they used to offer and sacrifice to God. Today we use our substance, our finances. Amen. And when you read Leviticus, I'll give you guys an assignment. Leviticus 1 all the way to, um, chapter 1 all the way to 17. You see how the children of Israel received instruction how to bring offering into the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, these animals were goats. Let's write this down. Goats, sheep. Oxen, pigeon, and turtle doves. These animals were goats, sheep, oxen, pigeons, and turtle doves. Now, these represent, these animals represent your financial status back then. Amen? So, if you are someone who are wealthy, 
you were required to bring an oxen. If you were someone who maybe just got married and may not have the, you know, the financial backing or much money to bring into the house of the Lord, you were to bring like a turtle dove. Amen. But when you understand that the principle of you obeying because the king has ordered you or commanded you to do something, you do so. Amen. Let's go to Proverbs 3 verse 9 to 10. And I'll take the Amplified version. Today, I want us to focus on two aspects of first fruit from a kingdom approach. Some of you, may, this may be the first time you're hearing about first fruit. Some of you, you know, has been taught over and over in our, in our church. Because this is a kingdom principle that we must apply. Amen. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops, income. I want us to read that together. Amen. Here we go. It says, let's go. Honor the Lord with your wealth mm -hmm. and with the first fruits of all your crops, income. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Then your barns will be abundantly filled and your vast will overflow with new wine. Amen. Amen. Now I want somebody to break that down for us and tie it into first fruit here. Let's go with Sister Christina. Based on the scripture... I think she's right there. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Amen. We'll go with that sister. <laughs> Amen. It's okay. Um, so basically what this is saying is that mm -hmm. once you give the Lord the first mm -hmm. of your increase. <laughs> <laughs> once you give the Lord the first of your increase, he'll be able to bless the rest. So. Mm. Back to what I think Sis Tasia said, it's like an insurance policy. Once you give your first, now the rest is blessed and, and covered. Amen. Amen. Let's give it a round of applause for our sister. Amen. She said, once you've given the first to the king, he now blesses the rest. Amen. So we see this principle of first here. That everything, we, we understood that everything belongs to God. Our income, when you have been paid the first of the year. Now, some people have the revelation that their first entire paycheck of the month, of the year, they give it to the king. Some people, it may, it may be the actual first um, two weeks of their paycheck. Amen. Now, this is where you need to have that conviction. Lord, should I give you, can I, should I give you the first entire month or the first two, uh, two weeks? Amen. But it's the principle that we are studying here of honor and obedience to the king. That when you are approaching a king, when you have been invited to see the king, you don't go empty-handed. Especially in, in the Old Testament, when you go see a king, you have been summoned. You cannot just go to the king anyhow, or because I want to see the king, or I know the king. You must be summoned. So as you're summoned, you take as a farmer or your herder, whatever your first uh, fruit is whatever the first that you produce by the grace of God you go and honor the king because one you want to honor and because you reverence the king amen now when we read the scripture in Malachi 1 6 it says as let's go to Malachi 1 6 and it says a son honor his honors his father and a servant his master, then if I am a father, where is my honor? Let's stop there for a second. Now, why would the king ask where his honor is? A son honors his father, and a servant honor a servant his master. Then if I am the father, the king, where is my honor? Now, as you are reading this, we're asking, Lord, king, why are you asking where your honor is? Could it be some people in the kingdom don't know what the decree is? Or some people, they do know what the decree is, the command is, but they're choosing to neglect it. So the king is asking, where's my honor? And if we keep going, it says, and if I am a master, 
Where is my reverent fear as respect due to me? Now we can go to anybody else in the kingdom and do whatever. But the king has summoned you and he's asking you, where is my honor? And one thing that I've learned is that you don't honor it with just your mouth. There, you must honor with your substance. Scripture, that's Proverbs. Honor me with your substance. Substance means something that you have produced by the grace of God, by what the king has provided you, and you're giving it back to him. So he's saying, where's my reverend? Where's my fear? Amen. And respect due to me. Now the king is talking from a place of authority. He's saying, as long as you belong in this kingdom, there's respect and honor due to me. Not with you, just with your mouth. Because everything that I've given you belongs to me anyways. And watch this. It says, says the Lord of hosts to you, O priest who despise my name. But you say, how in what way have we despised your name? Listen to this conversation. The priest, you and I, we're part of the royal priesthood, you and I, in modern time. We're asking the Lord, how have we dis uh, disrespected your name? People having a debate about first fruit. Oh, it's the Old Testament. We shouldn't follow it. Those people are the ones that, that they're asking the Lord. But a part of a kingdom, we don't ask questions. They disrespected the king. He says, how in what way have we despised your name? What honor is that? That just proves what the king was asking. Amen. And when you study this scripture, the priests, they were given first fruits anyhow. They were given uh, uh, sacrifices to the Lord anyhow. They were given sick animals as a sacrifice. They were given lame animals as a sacrifice to the king. So for us that are part of the kingdom, listen, it's not about the amount. God doesn't care about the amount. It's about the matters of your heart, how you give it in obedience and honor. So this morning, the king is asking, where is my honor? Where is the respect due to me? Amen. Amen. And in this kingdom, let's go to Genesis 8, verse 22. This month, as we're learning about kingdom wealth, it's very important for us to plug into the systems God has already laid out for us. All we have to do is honor him and obey him. Amen. It says, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Amen. Now, it says... Understand this, while the kingdom of God remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, the day and night shall not cease. So by interpretation and revelation, we understand that as long as the kingdom of God is here, as long as the Holy Spirit is in you because he comes with the kingdom of God, that this economic equation system that the king has given us, seed time and harvest will occur. But how come most of the citizens are missing this? Amen. So in the kingdom, the law of harvest has been established. Even when you sow something bad, you, re you reap it. You sow something good, you reap it. So when you give your first fruit, guess what? The Lord said, I will bless the rest. And as we learn from our father and mother... That the Lord, when it comes to tithing, and I believe we'll talk about tithing this month as well. You're only given, what, 10%. And as the apostle said, the 90%, it goes back to you. So we have to recalibrate our mindset, our thinking, that we're not doing, we're not doing God, the king a favor. He has given us. All we have to do is obey. Lord, you have said, bring you the first of everything. My child, I'm giving it to you. My time, I'm giving it to you. My substance, my resource, my income, I'm giving it to the first so that you can bless the rest. Amen. 
So it is imperative that we honor the king. We honor the king with our time, body, character, substance, actions, principles, and moral conduct. Now let me ask a question. What does honor look like in the world versus in the kingdom? I want somebody to answer this. What does honor look like in the world outside of the kingdom? Let's go with our brother um, Austin, please. What does honor look like in the world versus the kingdom of God? Amen. Um, honor in the world. Ooh, this is tough. Man. Um, so let me let me help you out. Does honor look like I'm coming to the king empty-handed, or I'm just talking? Does honor look like, oh, I'm just dashing the money at the king? What does honor look like from a physical perspective? Okay, so. Uh, Definitely, so when you are honoring someone in the world, um, you definitely do it with understanding of why you're giving honor to that person or, or to that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't just give anyhow, you give it with understanding of you know, why you're honoring that person, what that person means to you, mm -hmm. and then uh, the substance that you honor that person or thing with uh, is a reflection of that as well. Amen, amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Amen. So now, by definition, honor means to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect. To regard or treat with honor, to give special recognition, to confer honor. Amen. It means to regard or treat someone with admiration and respect. Now, if we don't understand honor in the kingdom... We may feel like, oh, I'm just going to do what, whenever I feel like, whatever I feel like. That's the world thinking. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'll do it next week. The Lord said, uh, you know, I have 11 months of the year left. Honor in the world, now in the kingdom of darkness, honor in the world looks like pride. Oh, I'm going to do however I feel like. I have this democratic mindset. It's about me. So therefore, I'm going to approach the king however I want to. Even if he didn't summon me, I'm just going to show up. But in the kingdom that we are talking about here, honor speaks of obedience. Honor speaks of obedience. When you honor somebody, you obey what they're saying, what they have laid out for you. Amen. What instruction they have given you. And obedience is compliance with an order Request or law or submission to another's authority. In this kingdom, we don't have authority of our own. So if the Lord has said, bring your first fruit, it's not our place to start to have a, God, mm, start to have a democratic conversation with the Lord. We simply do it because we honor him. We revere him. We love him. And we want to obey his word. Listen, the benefits goes to you and I. It goes to you and I. And the Lord is joyful when he sees you being blessed. But if we lack these two things, obedience and honor, and when it comes to the kingdom and the principle, the uh, uh, financial principle that the Lord has laid out for us, we cannot enjoy it. So, and in John 14 verse 15, it says, if you love me, obey my commands uh, commandments. So now it go, the Lord is saying, if you love me, obey my commandments. So many people who have received the information, the knowledge of our first fruit, now it's left with you to make that decision. Lord, I'm going to honor you with my first. I reverence you because you have command me, com commanded me to. And you have given me the grace to go to work, to produce something in your kingdom. And I believe when we have that mindset, it's going to help us obey a lot quicker. Sometimes you feel that resistance. Your citizenship <laughs> is in process. We have to become literal, what's the word? 
I don't even say that in, in my language. Like, we have to become like fools for the Lord. Have that, like, that crazy faith. That crazy, uh, 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 like, we have to have that um, radical obedience. Amen. The Lord said it, I'm going to do it. And we see the life of Abraham. We see that principle operating in his life. We see that principle operating in Hannah's life. We see that principle operating in Jesus' life. That as long as you give the first, everything else is blessed. Because Abraham was about to sacrifice his first, the covenantal child now, now we are all blessed. So that principle speaks from Genesis all the way down to Revelation. So as long as we are part of the kingdom, we obey and we honor with our, our first substance, our income, our first child. The Lord said he will bless the rest. That's the guarantee that he has given us. Amen. Now, in this kingdom, when you're giving your first fruit, we must be a cheerful giver. Now, this is where it speaks of the posture. Sometimes, I remember the first time I gave my first fruit, my mind was going bizarre. Like, I'm like, ah, this was back in college. <laughs> Those college years, mercy. But when you understand that you're approaching a king, the king of kings, you go with a cheerful heart. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 9, 7, the Amplified Version. And it says, let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is Whose heart is in his gift. Amen. So even as, we're, as first fruit is being called so that the priest can bless it. You're coming with your heart joyful that I'm coming to honor and obey the king. The very moment that you're walking from the aisles down here, the Lord is checking your heart. Like we said, it's not about the, the, the amount of money. It's not about the amount of the income. It's about the posture of your heart that the king is looking at. Does this citizen revere me? Does this citizen love me? Has they, have they blocked out their ears from every other talks around the town? Are they listening to my voice and my command? So as we are approaching to give honor to the Lord, we must come with a cheerful heart. If you're coming, dance. You're in front of a king. Some people roll around the floor. Now this is where the physical manifestation of your cheerfulness should be seen. Knowing your heart, your heart is beating. But as we're coming, King of kings, Lord of lords, I bless you, I worship you, I thank you. I thank you for providing for me. I thank you for all that you've done for me. I praise your name, you are indeed the King of kings. I thank you, I love you. The Lord is seeing, wow, her heart is pure. His heart is pure towards me. He loves me. I bless the rest. So I want us to lit. I want us to adhere to this, this month's teaching about wealth. Wealth is, is, is a heart posture. When you obey the commandments of the Lord and you revere him and you simply do what he has commanded you to, to do. The system works. Someone turn to your neighbor and say the system works. works. Uh-huh. Say plug in. Honor the Lord. Bless the Lord. Revere the Lord. Amen. So as we are learning about first fruit really also take your time and apostle and prophet has done teachings on it you can go back on youtube to really understand it in a deeper dimension but first fruit is simply lord you have given me this i love you i want to honor you i respect your word i'm going to do it and you do it in obedience and the system will work for you in jesus name we pray amen, amen. let us be on our feet Or if you want to clap for Jesus, the King of Kings, you can do a lot better than that. As you're standing, just begin to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for this teaching. Thank the Lord for opening up our eyes of understanding. Somebody lift up your voice and pray. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank the Lord for opening up your eyes of understanding. Thank the Lord that he has created a system for you and I to partake in the wealth of the kingdom. Say, oh Lord, I thank you for this teaching. I pray, may the spirit of obedience overwhelm me. May the spirit of honor visit me. May I be able to honor you without any resistance. Any demonic voice that will speak to me to deny your word, I curse it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you have established your kingdom for me to be part of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Someone make some noise for Jesus. Or you can do better than that. Someone make some noise for Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. No, it doesn't sound like I'm talking to the kings in this place, to the children of God. So I'm going to give you one more chance. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give it up to Jesus with a wave, with a shout, with the clapping of your hands. Realize that you are before the king. Realize that you are before your maker. Come on, with everything within you, begin to wave unto the Lord. Come on, wave unto the Lord. Come on, wave unto the Lord. When you look at Isaiah 61 verse 7, it talks about instead of ashes, he'll give you beauty. Beauty for ashes, and that's the glory of the Lord. Amen? Amen. How many of you know that the glory of the Lord is your portion? As a kingdom child, I don't see your hand. As you lift up your head, the angels will begin to locate you. Come on and wave. Come on, come on, come on. Now begin to clap. Let's go. Come on. 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 Oh, the glory. The glory.
every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, we want to go. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on and sing with me. Every praise, every praise, every praise to our God.
proclaiming today the word of God says at the name of Jesus at the name greater than any other name everything bows so when you say Jehovah you're commanding everything else to bow hallelujah 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 so now with this revelation when we say Jehovah you better scream you better command everything else to bow as a kingdom child come on 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 let's go Jehovah Jehovah
God. Eyes closed into that place with your God. Intimacy. Intimacy, yes. Don't let a song edge you on. Don't let mere men, leaders like us, edge you on. You know your God. Worship Him. Your Creator. Your Maker. The one who healed you. Yes, let your mind go back. The one who pulled you out of the pit. The one who you, today you can say you are saved. Today you can testify of his goodness. You can speak well of this God. When you are standing before unbelievers, you can speak well of this God. Worship him. And yes, you are the Lord Most High. Yes, you are the Lord Most High. Oh, yes, you are the Lord Most High. Yes, you are.
Yes, indeed, we lift up your name on high. You are our King and you are our Lord. Receive our worship. May your name alone be exalted. Exalted high above any other name. Have your way, O God. We thank you for such a time like this in your presence where we feel you in this place. We thank you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And let somebody shout aloud, Amen. Oh, come on, that Amen needs to top up. I said, shout aloud, Amen. The Amen needs to top up. Shout aloud, Amen. If you did not borrow your voice coming to church, shout a thunderous Amen. Amen. Before you sit down, I want you to walk to seven people. You see, there are some people, the only time they get somebody to tell them that they look good is in the house of God. The only time they get somebody to smile at them is the house of God. Because from Monday through to Friday, they have, they have to deal with some boss, some working colleagues who don't tell them nothing good. And so in the next few minutes, I want you to walk to seven people. Give them a high five. Give them a warm hug. Tell them how good they look. Welcome them into the house of the Lord. Come on, let's pray Jesus joy. Come on, somebody. Do it a KFT way. Come on, do it a KFT way. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Walk to the back. Welcome them to church. Tell them Jesus loves them. Tell them you're excited to see them in the house of God. Yes, 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 yes. Make sure they are smiling. Give them that smile. Yes. Ten more seconds. Come on. Come on. Ten more seconds. Let's spread the love. Let's spread the love. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 122 verse 1 that I was glad when they said unto me that let us go into the house. Come on, preach with me. I was glad when they said unto me that let's do what? Come on, I can't hear you. Let's do what? Let's go to the nightclub. Let's go to the school. Let's go to the hospital. Let's go to the emergency ward. But let's go away. Come on, put your hand together for Jesus. Oh, come on, do it better. Do it better. Do it better. Let's keep the energy. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May you be seated in God's presence. Amen.
What a joy is it to be in the house of God again. Anytime we come into the house of God, it's just an honor. It's just a privilege that we are not in the hospital, but we are in the presence of God. That's a good place to put your hand together for Jesus. And with that, on behalf of the one and only Apostle Dominic Osei and the prophetess Leslie Osei, we want to welcome you to our Super Sunday service. Oh, come on, that is weak. I said we want to welcome you out to our Super Sunday service. No service than any other. This is where we bring you the Word of God. This is where worship is filled. This is where praise is in the atmosphere. And you live here believing that your life will definitely never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. We welcome our virtual members. We never forget you. We love you so much. Come on, let's do it together. Put your hand together for our virtual members. Let's show them the love for their support and their consistency. God mightily bless your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to move straight forward to what God is doing in Psalm 66. Verse 16, the Bible says, Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. And so we have some brothers and sisters who want to declare what God has done for their soul. And in no order, I want them to come forward. But they already know the rules to the game. Somebody say the rules to the game. Now there are new rules to the game. And they know the rules to the game. And so let's welcome Candice Boahene, Brittany D.K., Richard Mensah, Abraham Akumu, Riku Abamwa and Dr. Ifosa. Let's put a hand together and welcome them. And the rule applies as we listen to their testimonies. Good morning, church. So I just want to quickly testify. Um, I want to thank God for using my parents to bless me with the car. Uh, about two years ago, they actually gave me a car, but... Like three days later on my way back from church, I crashed it. So after that, I was like, well, it's up to me to get another car. They're not going to give me another one. But God being so kind and the favor of God, they, the Lord used them to bless me with another car. So I just thank God. Amen. Good morning, church. I would like to thank God for divine alignment for allowing me to bring a patient of mine to Christ. He became a paraplegic five days before I was born, and the Lord ordered his steps 26 later to my hospital for him to receive the gift of salvation. Throughout this week, he thanked me for taking the time to share the gospel because he felt he was not good enough to receive it. I told him God uses imperfect people and broken people, then heals them so that they can be used to share the gospel and allow his light to shine through them. I said, all glory goes to God because I'm just his vessel. I give God all the glory and honor for using me and giving me boldness to advance his kingdom at my job. And I pray he will continue to give me the grace, strength, wisdom, and strategy to advance his kingdom. I thank apostles and prophets for their teaching, as well as Brother Elijah for reinforcing it during Bible studies. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, I know the rules, so it was long, but I know the rules. I just want to thank God for my life and my family. Um, I always say that when you tap into something, you have to make sure that you're ready. I tapped into Prophetess Leslie's birthing, and apparently I've had one, two, three, fours over there. I just want to thank God for my, my kid's life. Um, God has been so good to me. Um, this baby boy is a blessing to all of us. I was pregnant. Every time I'm pr Prophetess Leslie's pregnant, I feel like, oh, I'm pregnant. I take a pregnancy test. I'm pa. I'm pregnant. So this baby, um, they thought that I was supposed to have twins. So it was supposed to be a twin baby, and I lost one. And then the God, I mean, the doctors told us that this baby that I'm carrying is only 30% chances of survival. And I looked at the doctor. And I said, well, not me, because I'm a child of God, and God is going to protect it. And he looked at me and actually said that, well, I believe that I'm glad that you have faith, but your child is not going to make it. And I said, okay, no problem. So, of course, you know, when you have a miscarriage, you bleed and stuff. I was bleeding consistently for six months. So every time I was crying and I was scared and I'm like, oh, Lord, you cannot do this to me. Fast forward, um, he, this was his first time at um, Ark of Men. 
and the Lord told me that he has to go. So he went last year. What was the last year? And that time, um, I felt the contractions, but I told him to go. He went, he came back, and I went to the hospital. They sent me back again because they said that, oh, um, they don't deliver on weekends, which was a Sunday, which made no sense. After that, I came back. I had contractions, and Saturday, the following Saturday, this baby was born perfectly, perfectly well. And by the grace of God, he's here. And I wanted to say that God is real. And no matter what, the devil tries to use other people and tell you that it's not going to happen. God is real. Amen. 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 Um, just want to thank God for opening the door for me to be accepted into doctoral school. Amen. Amen. Um, by God's grace, I'll be pursuing a PhD in organizational leadership. Amen. Um, I just want to I just want to thank God for my wife. Um, she's been truly amazing. She's been God sent. Yeah, amen. Um, her support has been just truly, like, I just truly appreciate it because there's a lot of reasons why she could say, don't go for it. We have a lot of things happening at the same time, um, but she didn't do that. She just encouraged me through the application process, through an interview process. So I thank God for her life. Um, I thank God for my mother. My mother, since she knows, since I was a kid, and to all my siblings, she literally decrees and declares all types of things. She doesn't even call us by our names. She calls us by what she wants to see us do. Um, and to see that a lot of the things that she has declared over my life and over my siblings has actually come to pass has truly been amazing. So um, as a parent now, you know, we don't take declarations lightly. We decree and we declare some things, and we trust that it will be established. Um, Lastly, I just want to thank God for Apostle and Prophetess. Um, their teachings have been truly life-changing uh, since we've been here. Um, the, the teachings have just really changed our mindset. Uh, we went from a limited mindset to a mindset where we think that we can, we can do anything by God's grace. So we thank God for Apostle and Prophetess. We thank God for this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Lord, I'm available to you. Oh, my will I'll give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord. Amen and amen. Good morning, church. I want to take this time on behalf of the Divine Fire Drama Ministry, also the Line of Judah Darlings, also the Praise and Worship Team, to truly thank God for allowing us to minister his word and selecting us as art ministries within his kingdom on Carol's Night. Many souls were blessed, and we thank God that we're able to push the significance of the birth of Christ. So I'm going to take the time and truly thank and exalt his mighty name. We want to also shout out to our media team. Please give a round of applause for them as well, for the work they did behind the scenes or from the scenes for us. Thanks once again to our Divine Fire Drama Ministry. Also give it up to them as well. Also our uh, Line of Judah Darlings. Please give it up for them as well. Also for our praise and worship team. For also uh, Sis K, who wrote such an anointing play per the leading of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for her life. Also to our director as well, which is Sis Kate and also Sis Shanice. God bless them as well for leading the charge and telling the story by God's grace. And just everyone that helped behind the scenes from the stage crew and so on. God bless you all. Uh, secondly, I want to take this time to thank God for adding another glorious year to my life. Uh, on December 17th, we praise God. This birthday was a bit unique. Um, I share the same birthday month as my father. So as as you all know, I lost my father a couple months ago. So to be able to share this special month with him, I uh, just thank truly God because he gave me such joy on that day. I also want to thank God for adding a, another age to my beloved father. I'll be going to Ghana this month to lay him to rest. So thank you all for your support. I thank everyone who supported me and my family, my KFC family. I love you all and God bless you all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Or put your hand together for them for complying to the rules so now you all see the way it's done let's be on our feet and that's how we go amen tell your neighbor and that's how we go in jesus name let's thank god for these testimonies lift up your voice 
Let's thank God for these lives, for what God is doing in the church, for what he's using our father and our mother to do in these last days. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We thank you for such wonderful testimonies. We give you all the glory. And we say receive these testimonies to your glory and your glory alone. We seal these testimonies with the blood of Jesus. That nothing evil will happen to any of these ones or the testimonies that they gave. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now we want to receive our tithes and our offering. So let's put our hands together and welcome our brother, Brother Emmanuel, as he leads us. Amen. Let us make our way to the altar of the Lord as we bring to him what belongs to him. Amen. We understand by the word of God that the tithe belongs to the Lord. And today we have also learned through Bible studies, that is also a way to honor him. We give it to him because it is his. And when we withhold it from him, not only are we robbing him, according to the word of God in Malachi chapter 3, but we are also dishonoring him. And so this morning, let us make our way to the front, to the altar, and to give unto the Lord what belongs to him. Amen. Lift up your tithe as we pray to the Lord. As we have entered this year, pray on your tithe that the Lord will give you the strength and the grace to continue to do it. That no matter what comes in the year, you will still be faithful and you will give unto him what belongs to him. Lift up your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. And pray on your tithe that you will continue to do what is needful, what is required and what is your duty that you will give to him what belongs to him. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray we come before you this morning to offer unto you what belongs to you. We are standing here acknowledging that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And as you have provided unto us, from that we have taken our tithe to give unto you because it belongs to you. We pray that you accept our tithe and that you rebuke the devourer for our sake. And that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing into our lives that there will not be room enough to contain it. We pray that the past will not come after our harvest and that our seed will not miss a time. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. You can go ahead and place your tithe in the bowl. Amen. Those of us virtual watching online, our virtual members, you can also send them in. Amen. And let us be on our feet as we welcome the praise and worship team. Let us prepare an offering unto the Lord. The word of God says that in tithe and in offering we have robbed him. So let us come to him with an offering this morning. Amen. 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 It looks like I might be singing today. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. I need a little bit more energy from you. Amen, 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 amen. Now we know that the word of God says that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and God's possession. Amen. amen. So as we reflect on that, make sure that you're honoring with the king whom God possesses you. Make sure that you're honoring the king with your substance, knowing that you are his chosen. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go. We are a chosen generation. All for to show his excellence. Oh, all I require of the life God has given me. I know who I am.
us call brother Abraham to pray for the offering for us. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we pray over the offering. Father God, we just thank you, O oh Lord, for providing jobs, for providing means for us to give into your storehouse, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we have faithfully given unto your storehouse, O oh God, that we'll experience increase in every area and every aspect of our lives, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, that whoever was not able to give, O oh God, that you will also provide a means for them to also give unto your storehouse, O oh God. Father God, we just thank you for what you're doing in this house. We thank you for the means that you're providing, O oh God. And we just give you glory and we seal this offering in your blood. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. If we can have it on the screen, please. The Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. And so anytime we come into the house of God, and the word is being preached, you should pick and understand that these things is the reason why the word of God is coming to you. And that is why you can't come to church and miss the word. Amen and amen. And so today, we are going to hear the word of God. Amen. No, you are not excited, so your hands is, is glued together. I mean, prove to me that it's not glued together by putting your hands together for Jesus. And today we have a special person to bring us the word of God. Amen and amen. You see, eagles don't fly with chickens. Eagles fly with eagles. And so if our papa and mama are not around, they make sure that they give us another eagle. No, you didn't hear me. They make sure they give us another eagle. And so today we have an eagle to preach to us. And we all know him. Now let's listen to his biography before we welcome him to minister to us. Amen. Pastor Paul Boache Date is the lead pastor of Graceland Church in, Sound, in South Wisdom, which began in 2019. He began his ministry after serving two decades with his former church in the United States of America and in Ghana as well. Pastor Paul's ministry is moved by unique way of communicating God's word and wisdom as a teacher, a counselor, an author, and a podcaster. He's happily married to Esther Boachidate for 17 good years. And together have been blessed with five amazing children. Pastor Paul owes everything to God's unending grace. KFT with Jesus joy. Let's receive the ministration of Pastor Paul Boache Date. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. The child in me, when you receive such introduction, you want to start jogging or doing this as if you're going to box. Amen. But how about we do it better for the one who makes it all possible? Even Jesus. Even Jesus. You see, if your team won the World Cup, you will shout better. If your team wins the Super Bowl, you will shout better. Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. How many of you know that the KFT choir is a very good choir? All right, all right. And yet, the heavenly choir sounds better than the KFT choir. But listen, listen. And yet, when we decide to praise God, he tells the heavenly choir to hush. Because he cannot inhabit their praise. But he can inhabit your praise. Lift it up for Jesus! Lift it up for 
Some of you are not shouting because you know you don't have a good voice. But scripture didn't say make, make a noise because your voice is good. He said make a joyful noise. So somebody make a joyful noise and lift up the name of Jesus. Last but not the least, I want you to touch somebody. Anybody who is sitting next to you or standing next to you, touch them. The woman with the issue of blood, some of you think she touched Jesus, but she never touched Jesus. She just touched the hem of the garment that was touching Jesus. So perhaps the one you are touching, Jesus is living inside of them. Oh, come on, somebody. Glorify God. Glorify God. Glorify God. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from my wife. Hallelujah. She is the closest person to Jesus Christ that I know. Hallelujah. Oh, this was at the old place. Hallelujah. Oh, has God been good? Amen. 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 I also bring you greetings from my Graceland Church family. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, how about we celebrate the inestimable, incomparable... Apostle Dominic and Prophetess Leslie. Hallelujah. Amen. What an amazing, what an amazing gift to the body of Christ. Amen. I've come to realize that the next time I come here with my wife, I will probably propose because this place smells of proposal. Amen. And I personally thank God for their marital example. Because a lot of people run away from marriage. But to see a house of God where the young people embrace the concept, the beauty, the purity of marriage, the security of marriage, this is only the doing of the Lord. And we have to celebrate them for that. Amen. Wherever they are, I want to say thank you. Um, you know, you can allow somebody into your house when you are there. It's not a big deal, right? Because you are watching over them. Right. But when you can allow somebody to come into your house in your absence, but with your children there, it is a measure of trust. Amen? And so I appreciate them for trusting me um, to be able to come in their absence. You, you and I know that you don't let people into your house when your precious is in the house, right? Amen. So it means that they trust me. Amen. So I thank God for that. Let's say a word of prayer. Father, these are your people. We are your people. Your word says the gathering of the people shall be unto you. This is your word. Your word is not just meant for our ears. It's meant for our hearts. Your word also says the heart of the king lies in your hands. So therefore, Lord, may your word find place in our hearts. May we not just be hearers, but may we also be the doers of your word. And at the end of the day, may everything we say, hear, and do glorify Jesus Christ. And may we become more like Christ at the end of the day. In Jesus' mighty name, say amen. amen. All right. Before I preach, I like to do a declaration. We do it in our church or everywhere I go and preach. 
I want you to please do it with me if you, if you can. Please, can you please put it on the board? Amen. It's the first sermon slide, if you have it. Ready, go. I trust in the integrity of God's word. It's infallible, unfailing, faultless, impeccable, perfect, precise, and accurate in its declaration. Final in its authority. Comprehensive and all-sufficient in its provision. Let's all say it together. I love God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. You may please take your seat. You may please take your seat. What a, a powerful theme you guys have for the year. Woo! The year of kingdom influence and takeoff. Let me just warn you, today I'm just going to deal with uh, kingdom influence. As for the takeoff, I will leave it to mama and papa to do that for you. But we are definitely taking off. Amen? Amen. It's important that you understand that for a takeoff to happen, certain things must be done. Amen? Now, if you were to get into your car to drive from here to the nearest gas station, how many of you would check your tire pressure? Almost nobody. Nobody would check their tire pressure, right? How many of you would check your engine oil? You don't do that. But how many of you know that if you are going to get into a helicopter or an aeroplane to go even five minutes away, you have to check all those things. So when you are taking off, you don't just take off. Actually, the qualification to take off is based on what kind of work you have done before you take off. So this year, you are not driving. You are taking off. Okay, these people are not ready for takeoff. In other words, aeroplanes and helicopters don't just fly. A lot of work goes into it. Sometimes it doesn't even matter how far it is going. The same amount of checks is necessary so long as it's going to leave the ground. So a lot of preparation will be going into the actualization of the year of kingdom influence and takeoff. So my job is just to continue where Apostle Dominic left off. Amen? I have um, seen the notes that he preached last Sunday. And if you hear some of the things as repetition, it's because that is what it is. Amen? And so there's emphasis. The first thing I want us to talk about is that developing the kingdom mindset is important because the mind is the steering wheel of life. For those of you who are writing notes, write that down. Say, my mind, say after me, my mind is the steering wheel of my life. It's important then, therefore, that the direction of our lives is not just going to be based on how much speed we have, but rather where our mind leads us. That's why it's important that in the year of kingdom influence, we are going to recalibrate our mind to be able to actualize that which God has deposited in the heart of your leaders as the theme for the year if you belong to this house. Somebody say amen. amen. So the title of my sermon today is Developing the Kingdom Mindset. Say the Kingdom Mindset. All right. Among many of the facets and roles of God, we have two very prominent ones, Father and King. Father and King. So let me give you an example. If you have a president of a nation who happens to be married and has children, we can say that he is the commander-in-chief of the nation, but to his wife, he is a husband. To the children, he is what? A father. So, 
if human beings like you and I can have multiple facets and multiple roles, how much more our Father in heaven? So, it's interesting that when Jesus introduces us to the Lord's Prayer, as we've come to know it, the first salutation is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Now how many fathers have kingdoms? So in that prayer, we are introduced to two of the most prominent roles that God is ever going to have in your life. Why is this important? Because when it comes to the book of Genesis, we realize that Abraham didn't have this privilege. To Abraham, God was a mighty God. Who by invitation and a little intimacy called him a friend. And Jesus is telling us that when it comes to you and I in the New Testament, the focus is father and what? King. Now how many of you, if your father were a president and you walk into his office, you're going to say, your excellency. How many of you do that? You're not going to do that. Why? Because he's not, he's not a president over your life. He's a father first. He's a father first. But this same father of yours, when he's addressing the nation, you don't call him father. You look at him as the president. In this year of kingdom influence and takeoff, may God not just be a father. May he also be a king over your life. May he also be a king over your life. Can somebody take care of this for me? Just put it off. Thank you. Just. Amen. So God is omnipotent. And the word omni simply means including all. So among the many titles and the roles of God, we are focusing on just two. Because he has an omni-personality. He has an omni-ability. And in these things, encompasses all that he will be or can be to you and I. So two of the major roles are what? Father and what? King. Father and what? King. All right. Please follow along. So I want us to explore some historical context of how God has always wanted his kingdom to come. God has always wanted his kingdom to come. I want you to understand that it is the nation of Israel that looked at how other nations were being run and went to God and said, we also want a king. It wasn't God's ultimate plan, but that's what they did. And God said, okay, we'll go with it. Amen? All right. Turn your Bibles, or you can see it on the screen. Zephaniah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 14 to 20. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Zephaniah is in the Old Testament. For those of you who are using a manual Bible. <laughs> I read, the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. A warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. And I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Amen? If the power of, say, America is felt in only America, how powerful is America? So God has always wanted the conditions that make heaven heaven be represented over every other 
place he oversees. Now, for those of us who come from the islands or most of the countries in Africa where we were colonized, right? The only thing that was different from what the conditions were in where we lived and the places where we were colonized was the weather. I grew up being taught to speak British English. So when you give me H2O, I will say water. Hello? Right? Because that is what our colonizers taught us to say. Why? Because a colony's pleasure is that the conditions that exist in the colonizer's town or city or country is the same thing that should happen where they colonize. So when we pray and we say, let thy kingdom come, it is a request that God, in heaven you are not challenged. Whatever you say happens. Therefore, in my life, when I say, let thy kingdom come, it means not my will, but your will be done in my life. How many of you know that the Garden of Eden was not heaven? The Garden of Eden was not heaven. But in the Garden of Eden, it was a mirror of heaven. Why? Because whatever Adam wanted happened. Do you know that the lion was never, ever an intimidating animal to Adam? Because in the garden, they knew their place. They knew their place. Like, the lion would dare not roar in the presence of Adam. Why? Because the kingdom existed there. One of the things Christians make the mistake of doing these days is that we think that the enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him, is fighting God. If that is your mindset, you don't know God. Honestly, you don't know God. The enemy fights the purposes and plans of God. He cannot fight God. They are not on the same level. And one of the first things you must understand when we talk about kingdom is that it is God's rule over everybody else's. So in the Old Testament, we see how God has always wanted that the same kingdom mandates that existed in the garden would exist in your life and in my life. And Jesus comes and tells us that not only does your father want it to be so, but it is the time right now. Somebody say right now. Let's read another scripture once again to give us um, context from the Old Testament. Psalm 24 verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah, the Bible says. Once again, we are introduced into the, the concept of God wanting his kingdom to dominate the earth. But we see that there's an opposition to what God has said. And the first time the Bible introduces us to opposition to God's kingdom was not in the Garden of Eden. Actually, if you read the Bible chronologically, you would understand that the fall of um, Satan happened before the garden. He 
Isn't it interesting that even in heaven, where God's throne, God's dominion, God's power is seen, there were still some bodies that decided to fight God. Hallelujah. But you never hear or see in the Bible, God sat on a horse and went to fight Lucifer. No, 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 no. No. May it be so in our lives. For God's kingdom to tabernacle among us, some gates must be lifted. Hallelujah. Oh yes, some gates must be lifted. How many of you go to Walmart? Anybody? Yeah, right. How many of you have gone to Walmart and opened a door before? Anybody? If you go to Walmart and you open a door, you, you, you have to change your zip code. I'm sorry. Because the doors in Walmart, they are motion activated. Hallelujah. Right? And then there are also certain doors that are voice activated. Some of you even use phones that are face activated. So I don't know what kind of gate you need to open. Some of us, that gate is simply taking a step. Hallelujah. Some of you, that gate is simply showing your face. Hallelujah. That's why I tell people all the time, before Apple could use their face to open a phone, before all these doors God was already ahead of the game, guys. When the children of Israel stepped foot in the, in the water, what happened? Pew. Where was Siri by then? Somebody talk to me. Say the king of glory will come in. Say the king of glory will come in. Amen. I want us to look at a few things that represent the kingdom. A few things. I know Apostle has talked about this. But a kingdom is a domain ruled by a king. Now I want us to get this concept correctly because we live in a democracy. Right? And we live in a society where a lot of eyes rule. I prepared, I prepared my message on an iPhone, transferred it to an iPad, finished it on an iMac. I'm just kidding. So many eyes. And one of the things that we need to do is to recalibrate our mind and say when it comes to kingdom, it's not about me. Oh, yes. I, listen, I know the Me Too movement is big in our day and time, but it is not about me. Let me show you how if you don't lose that mindset, you can lose certain things. Now, the Bible tells us that David was the younger among his brothers. Those of you who come to Ark of Men conference, you've heard this, you've heard this before. David was simply a young man with a side hustle. He was doing door dash for his family. His father called him and said, take this bread and cheese to your brothers who are fighting. Now David, if he were in the Me Too movement, could have said, why am I the one, the younger one, going to the most dangerous place after leaving my most dangerous job when my older brothers are sitting at home sipping Kool-Aid with a remote control in their hand? Oh, but not David. A kingdom-minded person removes the eye and says, you are the great I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because too many of us are filled with ourselves. I have even come to see that there are Christians who believe in their prayer. You know prayer can be an idol? Hello, hello. You know prayer can be an idol. The day you think that it is your prayer 
that has subjected God to bless you, you have made prayer an idol. Ha! Listen, a kingdom-minded person understands that it is not about me. A kingdom-minded person doesn't ask, why me? A kingdom-minded person asks, what would you have me do in this hour, in this situation, in this minute, in this time? It's not about me. It's not about me. It's not about me. So David was not offended. Now let me tell you something. David was not working in a very friendly environment. Imagine you go to work and you come back and your complaint is not just traffic or an annoying boss. But your complaint is that, man, while I was tending the sheep, a lion and a bear just passed by. Hey! <laughs> a lion and a bear? That's, that's his complaint. So imagine coming back from work and that's your complaint. And then before you can sit down and take off your shoes, your father says, hey, Put on your door dash up. This one, take it to your brothers. And then you casually go. And you see what Goliath is saying. Mind you, the boy had never been trained in how to fight. Sometimes I ask myself, what made this guy think that it was his to fight? Listen. Kingdom influence doesn't come from your surroundings. It comes from within. It comes from within. It comes from within. Because for many of us, and this is one of the things you must get to, God is not just your savior. Jesus is not just your savior. He's your Lord. There's a difference. There's a difference. Sometimes when you get an emergency and you go to the doctor. Because you are in that emergency situation, whatever they say is gold. But immediately you stand up on your feet. You walk out of the hospital. They tell you, don't eat that. Oh, some sisters are confessing. Hallelujah. Am I the only one? Am I the only one? Right? Whilst you're standing on your feet, it doesn't matter. But David knew one thing. David knew one thing. That every New Testament Christian must be able to actualize in their life. God, I thank you for saving me. But for the rest of my life, you are my Lord. Because we don't just come to God because we were being chased by the devil. No, 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 no. We come for redirection. We come for repurposing. Say, I'm a kingdom-minded person. Oh, say, I'm a king. Say it like you mean it. Say, I'm a kingdom-minded person. A king is not voted by people. He's born into it. Hallelujah. Amen. I was born a Ghanaian. Right? And, and when I got married, I, I, my wife filed for me to become a, a, a person with a green card and ultimately to become a, a, a citizen, right? In God's kingdom, you don't file for people. Ah. Oh, come on. I, 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 wish, I wish I didn't have to just make it plain. In God's kingdom, we, listen, when you get saved, we say you are what? Born again. Now, once you are born again, can anybody revoke your citizenship? Ah! Kingdom-minded people, your citizenship is secure. I remember when I got my green card, they told me that it is not permanent. Based on good behavior, it can be revoked. Ah! But God said, no, 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 no. My children to come into the kingdom, you don't need somebody filing for you. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. You have to be born again. One of the signs of a mature Christian who is kingdom minded, 
Now, let, let's, let's use this example. How many of us, if somebody wanted to file for you to become a, uh, to, to gain legal status, let's say in America today, and you had somebody with a green card, and you had somebody with a passport. How many of you would choose a green card? Let's see by hand. Okay. A few, two people, three people. How many of you choose the one with the passport? Why would you choose the one with the passport? They are citizen. What are the advantages? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay, in the same way, if you are in the kingdom and you are going to show your maturity, show me who you are filing for. Because when you have the green card, it takes extra steps. You have to prove this, you have to prove this, you have to prove that. But when you're a citizen, just by association, some rights are given to them. Don't be a dormant kingdom citizen in the year of kingdom influence and take off. Show your maturity by filing for somebody. How do you file for somebody? Listen, a Christian has two primary duties. Number one, to present Christ. Two, to represent Christ. Two different things. And I'll talk about that at the end of the sermon. A king's power is in his what? Birthright. I bless God for KFT. But you are not a Christian because you come to KFT. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I tell people all the time, the church cannot be like Burger King. You know, Burger King, you can go and enjoy the food and not find out who the founder is. But as for church, when you come, you must know who is the head of the church and his name is Jesus Christ. So your birthright is important. Your birthright is important. A king owns everything in their domain. You're going to be hearing this throughout the year. And let me tell you this. The theme for this year is not just going to be a one-time theme. You know why? Because this is something that once you accept, you embrace, it becomes part and parcel of your life. It becomes your mindset. It becomes your worldview. It becomes the spectacles through which you see everything. And mindset is very important. Let me tell you why. A person can see a piece of land that has bush and see raccoons and rats upon it and will decide that this thing is a nuisance. It's an eyesore. Another person will see it and see, hmm, we can build something here. Same thing. The difference is what? Mindset. So if you're a kingdom-minded person, you have to begin to see things through the eyes of the kingdom. So in the kingdom, the king owns everything. That is why when Jesus was questioned, he asked, he was asked, is it okay for us to pay taxes. You know, I like Jesus, man. May we get to the point to be like Jesus, where we don't answer questions based on grammar, but you answer questions based on intention. You need discernment. Because they were trying to trap him, but he was ahead of the game. In the year of kingdom advancement and takeoff, may your discernment be sharp. He said, first and foremost, look at the money that you are using. Whose image is on it? He said, Caesar. I said, okay, so give it to him. My question to you is, whose image is on you? Because you can't be in the kingdom and be calling things mine. I work for it. You know, I took the exam. It's my certificate. And it's my degree. And it's my, you know how we talk these days. A 
a kingdom-minded person, the only eye you are interested in, it's not even your iPhone or your iPad or your iMac. It's the great I am. The I am that I am. Now, after his eye, then I can be. He is so I can be. Because he owns everything. Everything. Listen, I have even come to understand that the devil works for God. Ah, you don't want to hear that one. You don't want to hear that one. The devil works for God. The Bible says that if the princes of this world understood the implication, the ramification of crucifying Jesus Christ, they would have left him. So in other words, when they were, when they were planning, when they were planning, guess who was listening? That's why I, 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 I struggle with Christians who fight what the enemy is trying to do. The Bible says that, oh, Jesus. The Bible never said we should fight his planning. The Bible never said that he's prohibited in planning. What the Bible said is that his plans shall not work. Ah. So God was aware of what they were doing. But imagine today you have smartphones that you can discuss something and then go on social media and then they bring you advertisements. And you think God is not aware of the plans that they are making concerning your life. But a kingdom minded person is not worried about what is being planned. He's worried about what the king's agenda for my life is. That's what I'm worried about. They can gather. Listen, weapon formation is not prohibited, but their prosperity is banned in the name of Jesus. So you can, you can, they can form, they can do everything. Listen, when Jesus presented himself before Pilate, he said, don't you know I can release you? Jesus said, no, 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 you can't release. You can't release what you have in court. You can't release what you haven't caught. He said, I brought myself. A kingdom-minded person will look foolish to the world. But in God's purpose, you are the wisest on the, on the block. You don't think David looked foolish? The young son doing all the hard labor? There are people signing up to go to Royal Academy. Because they think that is how they will become kings. David was serving at shepherd preparatory school. And when it was time for him to be king, they bypassed the Royal Academy Dean's List and went to the one who was serving his family, who smelled like sheep, who smelled like the field, and said, this is the one. Let me tell you something. Sometimes as the church, we miss it. Can we be honest? Can we be honest? Oh yeah, we miss it. The Bible says Samuel was a very powerful prophet. So powerful that if Samuel says something and God has not planned it, because of the, the love God had for Samuel, he would uphold the word. The Bible says nothing Samuel said fell to the ground. And yet this same powerful Samuel Seven times he missed it because he was looking for Saul in David. In the year of kingdom mindset, you have to reimagine things because you cannot look for you cannot look for yesterday in tomorrow. If God is going to do a new thing, then my mind must be renewed. Why am I looking for Saul? When God has moved on to David, seven times, seven good times, he missed it. Listen, in the year of kingdom influence, when we talk about blessing, you must think of it differently. When you talk about opportunity, you must look at it differently. Opportunities in the kingdom do not come wrapped like it is a gift from Macy's. Can I talk to the single people? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Listen, listen. 
Don't let social media fool you. You are not marrying a profile. You are not looking for a profile. You are looking for a soulmate. You cannot decipher a soulmate by looking at profile pictures. <laughs> you cannot. You cannot. Many of us, if we saw David, we would not even advise our sisters to go on a date with him. You are looking for profile. When God is showing you purpose, you are looking for profile. For those of you who have joined this church in this era, God bless you. But for those who were there when it began, hey! <laughs> you know, sometimes I ask prophetess, why were you documenting all those times where you were pushing the car and, you know, things were not... But if you see some of her posts from back in the year, you could tell that even in her pain, she believed there was purpose. I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe you are going through some pain. Maybe you have some things that are not so... Purpose is the anesthesia for pain. Eh? That is going to make your past relevant to your future. Yeah. Yeah. One of the first conversations I had with my wife, she asked me, I, I think we had, that was probably the first real conversation. She says, how good is your credit? I almost picked up my bag and left. Like, imagine, your first date, and the person is asking you, how good is your credit? What are you, IRS? Century 21? I'm not trying to buy a house. I'm trying to get to know you. But today, I thank God. I thank God. Because purpose doesn't look like Hollywood. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Purpose doesn't look like Hollywood. God saw a king, but we were smelling a shepherd. That's how God chooses a king. Kings are served. But the audition to become a king is service. In the kingdom, service. The Bible says of Jesus, he made himself of no repute. He didn't consider it robbery because he was equal with God. But he came down to serve you and I. Because of that, the Bible says, he has been given a name that is above every other name. But for service and sacrifice, Jesus' name will not be significant. He would still be in the Godhead, but will still be praying to Yahweh. Service and sacrifice in the kingdom is what gave him a name that is above every other name. So how dare you and I walk with chips on our shoulders? A friend of mine told me, Pastor Paul, so when you are going to preach, are you nervous? I said every single time. He says, but how? I said, it's not the words. It's the weight of the message you are carrying. God's son died so that you, you, who even your family members, some of them don't like you, can carry that message and you think it's about grammar? No. No, 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 no. When you stand upon uh, the stage and you sing, when you minister, when you, are, when you are sharing the gospel, remember someone's son died. Not just someone, the king of kings. You cannot take it for granted. No matter what you are doing in the kingdom, you cannot take it for granted. It's not about you. It's not about you. In the world system, look at how we treat celebrities. Look at how we treat celebrities. 
Which temple can you build for God to come and feel comfortable in? Which one? Have you seen the Grand Canyon? Have you been to Niagara Falls? Have you been to Mount Kilimanjaro? And yet a God like this, the architect of the whole world, he says, when I want a place to stay, I'm going to come into your heart. He says, even better, even better, I will inhabit the praise. In other words, on earth, God's white house is you and your voice. It's not about me. Say, it's not about me. It's not about me. And there's nothing more beautiful than a person who is yielded for God to use. If you don't understand this, you think the president drives in a limousine. So me too, I'll buy a limousine and when I drive, people will give way. Is that how it works? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's about who is in the car. It's not just about the car. So if you want to have kingdom access, I have to ask you a question. Who is in you? Is the king in you? Do you have the kingdom in you? Because that's what we do in this world, right? They did it, so I'll do it. No, it's not just the doing. It's who is in you. Listen, I like David because he exuded the humility that Jesus exuded. How many of you can serve a master that you are better than? Aha. <laughs> Imagine. You are singing in a choir, right? And the director doesn't know music. So you have to help them out. If you are not humble, the devil will whisper to you like, you know you're better than him, right? Like, no, you know, right? You know you're better than him. Just, just saying, just saying. The next day you come to rehearsal, you come with swag, like, uh-huh. Like, it, I don't like that song. Excuse me? Say, I don't like that song. Oh, really? But that's what we sing. I, I don't like that song. Attitude. Attitude. Pride. Pride. Rebellion. Outside the kingdom. Outside the kingdom. Out of God's purpose. Out of God's will. Why? Because you are focused on yourself. And not him. David said, No way. You know the difference between David and Saul? They all sinned. Was Saul perfect? No. Was David perfect? Actually, in the court of law today, David will be more of a criminal than Saul. Because what, what Saul did, you cannot even criminalize it because. It was between him and God. As for David, he wounded families. And yet David, when confronted, he said, oh my God. Oh my God. Whew. What did Saul do? Uh, one, one name thing, man. It was just, you know, like, hey, pride. Pride. Listen. If you are here and any time the Holy Spirit convicts you, this is one thing Christians do today. We compare sins. Uh -uh. Your sin is compared to the righteousness of Jesus, not to the other struggles of every, anybody else. When people say things like, oh, even David. No, listen. On that day, God is not going to say, oh, you did well just like David. No. He's comparing you to the standard. And who is the standard? Jesus. A kingdom-minded person understands this. Let's move on. How do we enter the kingdom of God? How do we enter the kingdom of God? If the Samsung president came to tell you about iPhone, how many of you believe it? Eh, yeah, right? It's a little doubtful. So the only person you can trust to tell you about the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ himself. 
Because he's from the kingdom. Let's see what Jesus Christ said about the kingdom. Mark 10, 14 to 15. Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. The world teaches you that the more mature you are, the more independent you become from your parents. The Bible teaches us that the more mature we become, the more dependent we are upon God. Opposite. You see why you have to renew your mind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in the world, when you leave your parents' home, you are mature. David too says that, from where can I hide? Even if I go to hell, you are there. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go. Different mindset. Somebody say different mindset. Childlike humility is what Jesus Christ is saying in that scripture. Childlike humility. You know there's adult humility. Adult humility is when you calculate the benefits of the humility. This is adult humility. Oh, Pastor Paul, nice to see you. Look at his big head. I know you won't say that, you know, but I'm just giving you an example. If you say it to God, God forgive you, right? But that's false humility. That's what we do. Service with our lips, but our heart is far away. I always tell people that you have to be careful how much you know because you are going to be accountable for how much you know. There are some sermons, if you didn't hear them, you are okay. But once you hear them, you are responsible for what you have heard. A childlike humility. Childlike humility means, number one, I thirst for knowledge. One of the, one of the opposers of the kingdom-minded lifestyle that Jesus introduced were the people who had mastered the old lifestyle. People master the old lifestyle. They hate new things. They hate new things. I remember I was part of a choir years ago. And when we got a, a, a bigger stage, there was a rearrangement of how we stood. One person quits the choir. Why? Because the person who stands in front of them, they have a hairstyle that is so flamboyant that when they stand, they can't see my face. Are you coming to be seen or you are coming to sing? She quits. Why? Because the person, that this new arrangement, I can't. Hey. Childlike humility. A thirst for knowledge. You must come to the point where you know that I don't know. We sing the song. Yesterday is gone. Today I'm in need. The people who don't sing that song, they don't want yesterday to be gone because it's all about them yesterday. The Pharisees didn't want an introduction of what Jesus was talking about. You know why? Because it will, it will demand them learning new things. How many of you know that your relationship with God is progressive? It's progressive. Adam knew him as a fearful creator. Abraham knew him as a friend. David knew him as a comforter. You and I today, we know him as Father, Son, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the future, we will see him as he is and we will be like him. Progressive. Progressive. Some people don't like progressive. Because, you know, it's like when somebody's an area champion and you introduce them to a world title fight, they don't want it. Because I'm an area champion. Why would I want to go and try something that, nope. The kingdom-minded person understands it's not about me. I'm thirsty for knowledge. Think about it. When Jesus appeared, the Bible says he went into the tabernacle and they looked at him. They gave him scripture. He opened it and told them that the, 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 um, the hand of God is upon me. He has anointed me to bring you good tidings, to preach the day of the, 
or, 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 or they set the captives free and all of those. There were captives sitting down in that service, but none of them believed him. There were sick people. He said, the anointing is here to heal. I am that person. They looked at me, ah, is that not Joseph's son? I was at his baby shower. The, the, can you imagine? May that not be your, your case. You must be thirsty for knowledge. You must have limitless faith. Somebody say limitless faith. Limitless faith. You know why you must have limitless faith? Because it's not about you. If it's about me, then of course I have limitations. The Bible says if you have faith like a mustard seed, so it's based on you. But if it's based on him, if it's based on him, you must have limitless faith. You must have total dependence on God. Total dependency on God. How many of you have children who are under three or four who tell you how to cook your, the, the food you cook for them? Total dependency on you. Even when you have asked for babies, they are even different. They can't even communicate what is wrong. When they are sad, they cry. When they itch, they cry. When they hurt, they cry. When they are lonely, they cry. It's total dependence on God. If you are going to be a kingdom-minded believer this year and beyond, your dependency on God must be extra. Amen? Absolute trust in God. Absolute trust in God. Do you know how absolute trust looks like? Remember, when David had gone to fight and he came back home and his house had been ransacked. Now, if you are a fighter and somebody brings a fight to your doorstep, what will you do? Oh, talk to me. What will you do? You fight back. That's what you are trained to do. What did David do? He went to worship. Think about it. A fighter was provoked and he worshipped. Hey. That guy was different, man. A fighter was provoked. And rather than do what came naturally to him, he did what came supernaturally to him. In the year of kingdom influence, you must think supernatural before you think natural. Because the thing is that if you annoy me, I will tell you my peace of mind. But God says, in order to have your peace of mind, don't tell them your peace of mind. I know it comes natural. I'm going to tweet how I feel. But God says, no, 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 no. Don't tweet how you feel. Temper your feelings to your faith and keep quiet. David went into the temple. The Bible says he asked for the effort. And he prayed. He said, God, shall I pursue? God says, not only shall you pursue, you shall pursue, overtake, and recover. Oh, a kingdom-minded person. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your some of us, we say, oh, but I, I know the roots. I know the, I, like I know. And then you just go. A kingdom-minded person always checks with the head office before they move. Absolute trust in God. Childlike faith. Very necessary. Matthew 4, 23, 25. And Jesus went all to Galilee teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went, his fame, sorry, went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Great multitudes followed him from Galilee and from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. Amen.
in a very practical way, I want to show you the difference between power and control. Power and control. There are a lot of people who are power drunk and because they don't have the understanding of what power is. Jesus tells us a story about a man who built many barns. In today's world, we will say that he was going to retire early. You know, he had, you know, he had paid his dues. He got what he got, right? He sat down, talked to himself, planned for himself, by himself, in consultation with himself. When he called the board of directors of his, of his life, it was me, myself, and I. And there are many of us living like that. It's all about me. It's all about me. The Bible says, heaven responded and said, you foolish man. That very day, the Bible says his life was required or taken away from him. In the kingdom, if you are not of use, I don't want to say what follows, but you, you know what I mean. In the kingdom, you must be always of use. A donkey was minding his own business. Jesus Christ sent his disciples who were fishermen to go and fetch a donkey. The owner did not ask why. You know why? Because the master had use of it. Some of us, if God knocked on our door today, our secretaries will answer. Some of us, if God demanded anything of us today, we we'll tell him to come back next week. Not like Abraham. A kingdom-minded person is the one who says, God, I'm all yours. Some of us, this is how we behave. You know when you're going for an MRI? Imagine you have an MRI appointment and before you go, you're putting on deodorant and perfume, trying to look good like, yeah. That doesn't matter when you have an MRI. You think your clothes matter when you have an MRI? No. Some of us, that's how we treat God. We think God is not invited into our secret chambers. We think God is not allowed to come into our savings closet. No. No. In the kingdom, everything is his. Everything. Even your fears are his. Everything. Somebody say everything. So power is good, but control is better. Let me give you an example. If you have a 16-wheel articulator truck coming on a highway, you don't need an equally powerful articulator truck to make it stop. Actually, you could have a very, very simple police officer holding up a stop sign. What happens to the articulator track? Why? Control. Control symbolizes authority. Power is just your right. For example, I'm allowed to say whatever I believe it's right for me to say. But do you know that the people in the sound room can cut my mic so nobody on the internet will hear me? That's control. This is power. God gives everyone power. I, I put before you life and death. You choose. You choose. And you choose. Always know that no matter how much power you have, God is the one who retains control. God is the one who has control. Wasn't it God who had in the heart of Pharaoh, knowing very well that he wanted to free the children of Israel? How many of you, if you were planning an escape, will plan an escape and had in the heart of the one who's keeping you in prison? You won't do that. But God. But God. God is all. Listen, a kingdom mighty person, no matter what you do, remember, God is the one who's in control. God is the one who is in control. Quickly, let's finish this. Mark chapter 4, 30 to 32. With what can we compare the kingdom of God? 
Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Amen? The kingdom nature calls for us to be a few things. Number one, we must not despise humble beginnings. God is not going to build a kingdom necessarily by just starting with a big bang. Humble beginnings. You saw how Jesus put it? The mustard seed is insignificant when you see it. Insignificant. Many of us, we will not understand the principle of mustard seed in our day and time because it doesn't look like what we have in mind. Because we live in a day of microwavable Thanksgiving dinner. So there are people who can cook Thanksgiving dinner and they don't know what brining is. They don't even understand the term because you can get it. Jesus says, no, 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 no. A mustard seed is insignificant, but when it is sown, some of us too, when it is sown, we miss it. You know why? Because if I plant corn here, how many of you can see that I've, plant, I've planted corn here? Unless you were there when I was planting it, will you know that I've planted corn? No. So many of us, we will start something in its plant form. Because we don't see it, we give up. Some of it, because there's no evidence, we allow people to come and walk on it. A kingdom-minded person is a person who can guard the seeds that God has allowed them to sow even when there's nothing to guard or at least nothing to see. Sometimes the kingdom-minded person has to understand that not everything you plant grows like this. Some things you plant, they grow down. They grow down. That's why in the kingdom, we say we walk by faith. And not by sight. So I don't care what you don't see. What I know is greater than what you can see. So if I've planted it and you don't see it, you can ridicule me all you want. But I'm guarding what I have planted in faith. Too many of us are, are, are comparing our lives to what other people are doing. Listen, a carrot cannot compare itself to an apple tree. They are both planted. They are both growing. One is growing downward. The other is growing upward. Why are we comparing? Uh -uh. So, respect humble beginnings. Understand procedural developments. Apostle was teaching you about the difference between time and turn. Time and turn. It's your time, but it's not your turn. Procedural development means it's a step by step. Step, thank you. Process. It's a procedural thing. It doesn't happen overnight. That's why many people miss Jesus. They had been praying for Jesus to come for years. When he came, because he didn't come with a motorcade, they couldn't see him. They couldn't see him. They were holding the scripture. It is like ordering something on Amazon. Holding your tracking number and tracking seats. And standing by your mailbox. Meanwhile, you ordered something like a bed. Can your bed fit in your mailbox? Nope. So just because they didn't see it in the mailbox, they said, ah. Do you know there are people today waiting for the Messiah to come? Oh, yeah. Me, what they read the, the, the word in Greek and Hebrew. You and I don't even know Aramaic. That's why if you don't change your mindset, God can be doing it in your midst. And you'll, be, you'll still be looking. When is he coming? When is he coming? Meanwhile, you are sitting next to them. Please, if I'm not, is this not prophecy? I'm, I'm just saying. I beg. Before you know it, somebody will go on their knees. I beg. I didn't say that. All right. <laughs> growth and maturation growth and maturation in the kingdom your eye is on the prize 
but your heart is on the service. You serve. You serve. You don't serve for your fellow servants to see you. You serve for the master to appreciate. Too many of us, if you don't applaud us, we stop serving. Too many of us, if you don't tag us, we don't... Mm, I'm upset now because they didn't tag me. I did the... No. No, 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 no. no. In the kingdom, the servant is the highest. In the world, the one who is served is the highest. Think about it. Back in the day, kings used to go to war. Today, they send you to war. When the victory comes, then they show it up with ceremony. No. In the kingdom, is the other way around. The next level is manifestation. Somebody say manifestation. Say manifestation. Many of us, when we see a little sign, we run away. Oh, no, we, we think we have arrived. Sorry. The other day, Peter seeing how anointed and saturated the place was, told Jesus, Master, this place is good. Why don't we build a tabernacle here? Let's just stay here. This is comfortable. What did Jesus tell him? How many of you, how many of you know your scripture? What did Jesus say? What? When, when, when Peter prevented, tried to prevent Jesus from going to the cross, what did he call him? What did he call him? In the kingdom, you have to realize that sometimes your closest allies can echo the thoughts of the devil. Not that they are the devil. They are just reading the devil's manuscripts. It's enough. You've gone high enough. It's okay. It's, you know, I call it friendly fire. You know, when your enemy fires, it's clear. But when your friends fire, who? Who? That's why I love Jesus. Jesus told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. And yet he was the very one he was going to entrust the church into. Many of us, if we were Peter, we wouldn't come back because we are offended. Listen, the Bible says the Lord chastens who he loves. If you have a friend, you cannot chasten. They are not your friend. If you have a brother, you cannot rebuke. They are not your brother. Maturity in the kingdom, it doesn't look like what the world is preaching out there. It doesn't. The growth and manifestation uh, 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 maturation and manifestation is, is a different thing. Some of us, a small bud, and then we begin to change. No, 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 no. Can't do that. The first time David was introduced into the palace, he was not a king, he was a servant. Even when the king was a miserable man, that it took David's anointing for him to have some relief. David never lifted up his shoulders like, no, 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 no. Actually, the Bible says when he was anointed, he went back to the field. Hey, some of us, if we are anointed today, even if you are like me, you will grow Jerry Kells or Afro or Waves or whatever. Right? He went back. How many of you in the year of the kingdom can handle rebuke and still be serving faithfully? The thing is that if you want the reward of men, you can get it. You can even buy it. But the reward of God. Listen. Listen to what God said about David. When, 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 when Samuel finally made his seven errors because he thought what God is going to do in the future will look like what he has done in the past, God says nobody will sit down until that smelling, dirty, ragged David walks into the house. In other words, there was a standing ovation waiting for the boy. And he didn't even know why they were standing. <laughs> he didn't know why they were standing. He didn't know why they had summoned him. All he knew is that he was working. 
They called him. They interrupted him and he came. When he came, they were standing. They anointed him. He went back to work. The blessings you receive on your knees will be maintained on your knees, not on your feet. Yeah, yeah. Don't do something to get something and think you'll do something else to maintain it. Spiritual capacity over physical size. The mustard seed is not pleasant to look at. Actually, this one, some women who say amen, please say amen. Right? I know, I know the muscles look good. I know the... Listen, but until your life is going to be on, on the basketball court, really, you got to look beyond the muscles. Right? Unless your husband is going to be a bouncer, you got to look beyond that. And for the men, same thing. Same thing. Many of us look for capacity in the figure, not the capacity of the heart, not, 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 not the breath of their purpose. No, 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 no. No. If, 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 if human beings are choosing a king to ride into the town, they'll put him on a horse. Jesus said, No, give me a donkey. Donkey. Huh? In today's world, nobody will take a selfie with Jesus. I promise you. A donkey. Come on. But that was Jesus. Can you imagine? So, as a kingdom-minded person, you must rewire your taste, your preferences, your likes, your dislikes. You, it's a totally different mindset. Totally different mindset. Development takes time. Development takes time. In the world, we look at systems. In the kingdom, it goes beyond systems. It goes beyond systems. Mark chapter 1, 14 to 15. Getting ready to close. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. It is not enough just to believe. You must repent and believe in the gospel. Like I said, in an emergency situation, many of us will be compliant. Many of us. One of the hardest things to, to get to do is to have a mature person be humble. Somebody said, when you, are, when you have no influence, it's very easy to be humble. Oh, but when you have influence and you are still humble, we can clap for you. We can clap for you. And in our world today, even young people, even young people, are learning about their rights so early. So, so early that there's no time for humility. Do you know that Isaac, at the time Abraham was going to sacrifice Isaac, many of us would not have gone with our father. Because he was old enough to say, if this is a, if you are going to sacrifice, where's the firewood? In other words, he obeyed without knowing and then when he found out, he questioned. But he did not rebel. Many of us, if we question and we get answers, we'll rebel. There's a blessing that comes from honoring your parents that no level of education can duplicate. None whatsoever. Even Jesus, while he was on earth as, as God's representative, how many times did God, Jesus not pray to the Father and said, Father, I believe, but that these people may believe. Let it be so. Constant communication. Many of us, we think maturity is gaining independence from parents. In the kingdom, maturity is total dependence 
on the parents or on God as it were. How do we flourish in the kingdom? How do we flourish in the kingdom? Religion produces a system. A kingdom produces a culture. A lifestyle and not a set of rules. When you're driving and you see a stop sign and you stop, you are obeying a set of rules. When your brother is sick and you pray for them, you are exhibiting kingdom culture. Because nobody forced you to do it. It's your natural response as a kingdom-minded person. Any cultured person, when they go to a wedding, you go to a wedding and you see the reception and how they set it up, if you wait for the MC to come and tell you to bless the couple, right? You are operating in religion. But if you know what it takes to put something like that together, do you have to be told to be a blessing if you have their means? No. In the same way, kingdom-minded people, you don't have to come and tell them, give, give, give. No. Because a kingdom-minded person, they themselves, they are giving. They themselves, they have been given. Think about this. If I can give God my eternity, what is my time? What is my treasure? What is my talent? Actually, that phrase, my talent, there's something wrong with it. What do you have, the Bible says, that has not been given to you? What do you have? Nothing. Nothing. So remember, as a kingdom-minded person, I must always be careful that I do not have my culture mirror what the world is doing. Give me Romans 12 verse 2. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that word good acceptable and perfect. Three levels. Good, acceptable, and perfect. How many of you, by your own accord, will choose good? Is good bad? No. How many of you, if you could, will choose um, acceptable? How many of us don't want the perfect? Everybody wants the perfect. So the way I get to know what God's perfect will is, is that I refuse, number one, to be conformed to the culture, the systems, the patterns, the behavioral standards of the world. But rather, I will be transformed by the continual renewal of my, my mind. What the, what the church used to do is that we'll, we'll take our standard and go and compare it to the world. Say, oh, okay, then let's change it. No, 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 no. Think about this. Think about this. Back in the day, if a hurricane happened in Elijah's time and Elijah did not know about it, his head would be on the line. So think about it. In those days, the world used to come and find out what is coming from God's people. Now God's people go and ask them, what is coming? How can we pray for you? Flipped upside down. Romans 12 verse 2 says, no. Constantly renewing your mind because we need to prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the perfect will of God. The confidence Jesus had is, is, is incredible. To walk and tell Pilate, that you did not call me. I came on my own accord. And then he looked at him and told him, I am a king. I belong to a kingdom that is not like yours. When you know the kingdom you come from, you can tell another person who is in their kingdom that you also belong to another kingdom. But when you want to be honored in their kingdom, then whatever they say goes. This kingdom thing, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. 
Religion is the biggest opposition to, culture, to kingdom culture. Pay attention to the religion, the religious things we do. I'm ending. God is not looking for people with experience. He's looking for people who are hungry for an experience. You don't come to God with your resume. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. There's, the Bible says even your righteousness is like what? A filthy rag before God. Don't come to God with a resume. No, 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 no. Come to God with a ruptured heart. Come to God with a submissive spirit. David came to God with no experience. But he, was, he wanted an experience. How many of you want an experience? God is more interested in elevating a humble novice than a proud expert. God is more interested in elevating a humble novice than somebody who is just boasting of pride. A religious person thinks about their rights. A kingdom person thinks about God's righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things shall be added. Don't be a religious person. My rights. My rights. I'm offended. I'm offended. A religious person thinks about their rights. A kingdom person thinks about God's righteousness. Membership is based on rules and regulations. But citizenship is based on birthright in the kingdom. And the condition of one's heart. What's the condition of your heart? What's the condition of your heart? What's the condition of your heart? To be born again, it takes the condition of your heart. A religious person thinks about their rights, again, but a kingdom person thinks about what? Last but not the least, we must present Christ and represent him. The power of a kingdom is if it is, is seen, if it's able to exert its influence across. That's why back in the day when the British were colonizing major parts of the world, they were constantly fighting to get more territories. God is not fighting to get territories. He owns everything. What he wants is that his ambassadors will influence the world. A story in closing some years ago, when I used to be a, a child in Ghana, an uncle who was a U.S. citizen visited us around election time. And around that time, there were a lot of talk about how the elections could not go well and there could be fighting here and there. So my uncle got a telegram from the U.S. embassy that told him that if there's any iota of fighting, because he's a citizen, he just needed to show up at the embassy, show his ID card, and they will shelter him, one, or two, they will get him on a flight out of the country. Simply because he was a, a citizen. In other words, wherever America had interest, they made sure that the conditions of safety, the conditions of living in America was duplicated there. So wherever a kingdom citizen is, there must be kingdom influence there. And that happens two ways. Number one, you present Christ in sharing the gospel. You present Christ. In Your life must scream the gospel. Somebody said, preach the gospel. And if it is necessary, use words. <laughs> Kingdom influence. It means people look at you and they see the difference. Like, what? Like, you didn't hear the news or you don't have cable. Have you, have you been on social media today? 
Why are you smiling? Like why? Why are you smiling? I'm remembering the time Brother Matthew was drilling us with, 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 with a workout. And he was smiling. I was like, there, there's, there's nothing funny. You are making joints that I thought were dead come alive and you are laughing. Right? But your life must be like that. People must look at you and say, there is something about you. Like... And it goes beyond just presenting because sometimes we can present and leave. But how about representing Christ? How do you do that? By being his hands and being his feet. The Bible says if somebody needs water and you tell them God bless you, what have you done? What have you done? A true Christian is the one whose actions mirrors the way he lives. One of the things I like about Jesus Christ, he teaches his disciples how to pray, right? You think when Jesus gets in trouble, he's going to apply something different? No. So he says to his disciples, watch with me. And then he goes further. And then he also prays. The thing he told them is the same thing he told the father. One of the ways Christians lose the world is that we insulate ourselves in a bubble as if we don't feel what they feel. Listen, they will believe our message more when we tell them that we are who we are in spite of what we feel. So this year, in the year of kingdom influence and takeoff, when you take off, and they ask you, how did you take off? Don't tell them what happened was, you know, I've always been a bright student. No, 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 no. Don't tell them that, oh, as for me, my family, we've always been good with, no, 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 no. Point it back to who? Let them know that in spite of the same 24 hours, I find time to serve. Let them know that in spite that you might make more than me, I find time to sow my treasure. Let them know that in spite of every difficulty, I find time to do what the king will be pleased about. When the king elevates you, even the king's enemies have to respect you. Do you remember how Paul was fought while he was serving? And yet, the demons could say, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you who's coming in the name of Jesus? You want to stand up on your feet.
Thank you, Jesus. to glorify the king one thing about the king is that he shares his glory with who no one I want us to pray and what we're going to pray for is this year any goal any aim any project any dream any aspiration that you have we're going to submit that goal, that dream, that aspiration before it happens to the king. Trusting that the king's resources will bring that dream to pass. So if you know you have a dream, a wedding, a shower, a graduation, whatever. I want you to step forward. We're going to pray. Listen, God is not like Amazon, where when you order, we have to go and find it. In God's system, before you order, it's provided. 
So when God told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go, God was not looking for uh, building materials of how they were going to build his, his tabernacle. He knew what was going to happen already. That is why Israel, who didn't have an army, sent, get this, their women to go and ask their masters for gold and silver. They didn't fight for it. They didn't negotiate for it. Because the purpose of them going was that we are going to worship God. Not that we want our freedom. We are going to use that freedom to worship God. Whatever it is that you are standing here to represent, we're just going to pray for two minutes. You are praying, say, God, whatever it is, this goal, this thing, I'm submitting it to your kingdom agenda. Let it not be about me. Let it be through me. Let it be for your glory. Let it be for your glory. Lift up your voice. Let it be for your glory. Let it be for your glory. Whatever you are building, whatever you are dreaming of, whatever you are praying for, whatever you are crying for, in the name of Jesus, for your glory, for your glory, for the purpose and the sake of the kingdom, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it's not about me. 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 It's about you, O Lord. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about us. In the name of Jesus. Listen, there are times when it's about the kingdom, you have to bypass people of influence and focus on the king. Hannah's husband wasn't interested in having a child because he was content. And sometimes when a man or a woman, a human being, stands between what you need what you desire, what you want. Things will be done on their terms. But we didn't know that God also wanted a prophet for the future. So when Hannah came and aligned her desires with God's dominion and God's purpose, look what happened. But here's the key. This is what Hannah said. Hannah said, God, if you do this, the child is yours. So there are many of you, you are praying for something. But you are waiting to put your name on the thing when it is answered. Can we be like Hannah and say, God, that, that, that degree, that company, that marriage, that whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I'm going ahead of you and saying, your name is on it. Because when it's about the kingdom, it's not about me. Because kingdom agendas will be financed by the king. Get this, it will be financed by the king. So even if the king's chosen is not interested, because the king says it, it will bypass what man has said. 
Hannah. The same thing happened with Hagar. Abraham was an anointed man, but when he drove Hagar out of the house because that was what he had to do, Hagar didn't go in the wilderness and say, Oh, God of Abraham. No. Hagar prayed to God herself. Many of us, we preach the message from Abraham's point. But listen to Hagar. Which God do you think answered Hagar? So no matter what man is saying, I want you to align that purpose with God. And say, God, it's not for my glory. It's for your kingdom. Whether man is for it or not, in the king's name, because when the king speaks, it's not a speech. When the king speaks, it's a decree. It's a decree. It's a decree. So he will bypass whatever he needs to bypass. Lift up your hand. Say, Father. Father. As I stand here today. As I stand here today. Submitted to you. Submitted to you. As a kingdom citizen. As a kingdom citizen. Whatever my heart's desires are. Whatever my heart's desires are. I represent them to you today. I represent them to you today. Let it be for kingdom purpose. Let it be for kingdom purpose. Let it be for the kingdom agenda. Let it be for the kingdom agenda. May it be sponsored by the king. May it be sponsored by the king. May no man. May no man. No woman. No woman. No entity. No entity. No person. No person. No government. No government. No 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 decree. No decree. Come against. Come against. What I'm submitting to you today. What I'm submitting to you today. It is for your glory. It is for your glory. I am just a vessel. I am just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. And take the glory. And take the glory. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. And take the glory. And take the glory. Man cannot undo. Man cannot undo. What you do. What you do. If you speak. If you speak. No one can change. No one can change. If you speak, if you speak, it is settled. It is settled. It is settled. It is settled. Father, Father, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be. Let thy kingdom, let thy kingdom come into my situation. Come into my situation. Let thy will, let thy will be done, be done according to heaven, to heaven right now. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I want you to make a promise to God and say, Lord, when you do this, when you do this, I am writing your name. I am writing your name all over this testimony. All over this testimony. I am writing your name. I am writing your name over this testimony. Over this testimony. I will stand on the mountain top. I will stand on the mountain top and declare it to the world. And declare it to the world that this is the doing. That this is the doing of the Lord. Of the Lord. It is marvelous. It is marvelous in our eyes. In our eyes. Today, today, Lord, Lord, I make a promise. I make a promise to you, to you, that this is about you, that this is about you, and not about me, and not about me. This child, what, this project, whatever it is for you, yes, Lord, it belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Take it. Take it. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself in my efforts. In my efforts. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself in my efforts. In my efforts. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself in my life. In my life. In Jesus' mighty name, in put Jesus your hands together name. for Him. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, when the time comes. 
do not forget. Don't be like the lepers who were so excited that they were healed that they forgot to come back to be whole. There's a difference between healing and being wholesome. Amen? You get the healing now, but the wholesome comes, wholesomeness comes with the gratitude you come to show. So don't forget. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones. It's at the entrance of your word that faith comes. And they've responded in faith to the God who never fails. I ask that, Lord, you honor their faith in you in response to your word. Let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done in their lives for all to see and glorify the God upon whom they have called. And when the testimony comes, Lord, fill their hearts, fill their mouth, fill their hearts, O oh God, with a song that cannot be quenched. For the spectators who are watching, Lord, let this story be the one you direct and bring to an end. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. amen. Before I sit down, if you are here and you are not saved, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to lift up your hands. Anybody here who's not saved? You are not a born again Christian. Anybody here? Anybody? Awesome. That is good. But that is also not good. It means that there's somebody out there who you should have brought to church. Amen? Can you make another promise? Say next week, I'm going to do all I can to represent Jesus and present Jesus. And where possible, I'm going to invite somebody to church. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Come on, do it better. Do it better. Do it better. Come on, KFT. Let's do it better. Okay, if you said let's do it better. Amen. Amen. What a word. But we'll get into the session where we'll pray for Pastor Paul. But before we do that, we want to listen to the announcement for the week. Let's put our hands together and welcome our sister Raquel as she brings us our announcement. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat while we quickly go over our announcements for this week. Amen. Starting tomorrow commences our beginning of the year fast. Amen. Come on, you had a week off, so I know you can do better than that. Amen. And so tomorrow, 5 a.m. sharp, Eastern Standard Time, we are beginning our beginning of the year fast. It'll be 14 days long. The last three days, we will gather in person to celebrate and to enter into the new year. Amen. We are praying four times a day, 5 a.m., 12 p.m., 6 p.m., and then 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For these, this week only, we will be live only on Facebook and YouTube, virtual only for this week, live on Facebook and YouTube. Amen. How many of you are excited for the beginning of the year fast? Amen. And then for the month of February, we have our annual Love Day program. Amen. Okay, so we're not excited for Love Day. The privilege to glean from the knowledge of apostle and prophetess. Amen. And so the date is February 18th. Make sure to save this date. There will be great food. I heard the food ministry has some amazing new things prepared for us for Love Day. Amen. Also, be ready to network and build relationships with one another. Amen. For the month of March, we have the biggest Ark of Men's gathering. Amen. See, this Ark of Men is a little different because the admission is free, but you do have to register. Amen. And so we want to encourage every single man that is here, if you're watching us virtually, 
Arc of Men is a program you don't want to miss out on. Ladies, if you're also here, make sure to invite every man in your life to join us and participate in the first of three gatherings for the Arc of Men. Amen. Also, it's strictly for 20 and up. That's the age requirement, 20 and up. Amen. Also, we have our Papa's birthday coming up in the month of March. Amen. March 13th. And so as you all heard last week, we will be celebrating overseas. More information to come on that, but the invitation is open to workers only. Amen. Also, we will be having Revival Culture Texas. Amen. Someone say KFT to the world. Amen. So stay tuned for more information on that as well. Next week, we'll also be having our baby dedications. God has been so good to us here at KFT that we have so many babies to dedicate back onto him. And so next week, we will be having our baby dedications. If you have not emailed us already and you are a citizen of KFT, please be sure to do that. The email address is info at kftchurch.com. Amen. Also, if you're joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you to Kingdom Full Tabernacle International Ministries. Amen. Our mama and our papa, Apostle Dominic and Prophetess Leslie, also welcome you. We are the headquarters located here in Darien, Connecticut. Amen. By the grace of God, we have two amazing branches of this ministry. Amen. Our first branch is located in North Carolina. Amen. Come on, you can make some noise. If we want God to add on to that, we want to be grateful. We want to show our gratitude so he can add many, many more branches onto us. Amen. For our North Carolina branch, we have service every Sunday at 1 p.m. We have Jericho Hour every Saturday at 10 a.m. We have Bible studies every Tuesday at 8 p.m. And every Tuesday at 11, we also have prayers online. Amen. We also have our second branch located in the DMV area. Amen. God has been so good to us at KFT that our DMV location actually has a new meeting time and also a new venue. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. And so our DMV service time has changed. We now meet every Sunday at 11 a.m. Our new location. Amen. Our new location address can be found on the screen. The address is 6400 Ivy Lane, Greenbelt, Maryland. That is the address to our new location. If you follow us on all our social media platforms, you see that address there as well. And so we're no longer meeting on Saturdays, but we're meeting on Sundays at 11 a.m. Amen. Also, here are our weekly programs for our headquarters. We have midday prayers every Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have midnight oil prayers every Monday through Thursday at 12 a.m. online only. We have Bible studies every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And then we have our fire for fire night service every single Friday at 7 p.m. all year long. We want to encourage everyone this year, as it is the year of kingdom influence, that every program that we have, that you're posting the flyers on your actual pages so people are able to see and also experience what God is doing in his house. Amen. Also, every Sunday, we meet in-house for Sunday service starting at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're unable to join us in person, you're welcome to join us live on Facebook and YouTube. Lastly, we want to encourage you all to follow us on our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, every social media you can think of. All of our most recent updates can be found on our Instagram and Facebook platforms. So anytime we go live, it'll be posted on our Instagram platform. So make sure you're following us so you're up to date with our latest announcements. Amen. Here ends our announcements for this week. Let's call upon our brother Kenny. Amen. Well, put your hand together for Jesus. Can we kindly be on our feet? And let's put our hands together for the men of God that brought us the word today. If you were blessed, KFT. Oh, I said, if you were blessed, KFT, with a clap offering and a shout, let's celebrate God for his servants. Let heaven know that we are grateful for such a word. 
in the name of Jesus we want to stretch our hands towards the man of God Pastor Paul and first I want us to thank God for his life I want to thank God for the fact that he is a servant of God a true servant of God open your mouth and begin to pray we are thanking God for his life if he was not a servant of God he would not have had the opportunity to even speak the word of God to us so we are thanking God for his life thanking God for even his wife thanking God for his children let's thank God for this wonderful family lift up your voice and pray lift up your voice and pray let heaven know that we are grateful when we thank God heaven knows we are grateful Father, we are thankful for your vessel. We thank you, oh God, for your servant. We thank you for his family, oh God, for how far you have brought them. We thank you for even the word that was preached to us today. We don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for such a word that you put in your, in your servant's mouth, that he has brought us this word in this season to keep us going in this year, 2023. We say thank you oh God we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus we want to pray again as we stretch our hands towards the man of God we are asking that the Lord will continue to preserve him as he has watered us may the Lord also water him may the Lord preserve that which concerns him that nothing of the enemy will by any means hurt him in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and pray commit him to the hands of the Lord commit his family to the hands of the Lord his church whatever he's doing we are asking that the Lord himself will keep him in this life last days that he will continue to be a voice to our generation in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray that prayer KFT let's pray that prayer with passion let's ask the Lord to preserve him ask the Lord to guide him ask the Lord to sustain him in the name of Jesus ask the Lord to keep him and add unto him that he also will be kingdom minded more in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord keep him may the Lord preserve serve him in the mighty name of Jesus I want us to still stretch our hands there we want to pray for our papa and our mama you see it is because of them that we have been able to hear a word like this like I said eagles don't move with chickens they move with eagles and so we want to pray for our father and our mother we are thanking God for their lives in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray we want to thank God for the apostle and the prophetess that God has given us such a gift like this in this last days where many are preaching the false gospel but God saw it fit to give us the apostle and the prophetess to lead us in such a time like this open your mouth and thank God for their lives they don't have to be here for us to thank God for them but wherever they are we are saying Lord we thank you we thank you for their lives we thank you for what you are doing with them in them through them with them in the name of Jesus now we want to pray finally that the Lord will preserve their lives that wherever they are God will be with them in the name of Jesus that they will not dash their foot to any stone that the Lord will sustain them that the Lord will keep them on eagle wings will bring them back safely in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and pray for the apostle and the prophetess lift up your voice that God will preserve keep them will keep their children all that concerns them in the name of Jesus lift up your voice church lift up your voice church lift up your voice in the name of Jesus Lord may you preserve our father and our mother and all that concerns them that nothing will hurt or harm them in the name of Jesus may you go before them and may you make their crooked way straight in the name that is above every other name we pray that you will keep them their children their ministry that everything that concerns them is preserved in the name of Jesus our Heavenly Father we thank you and bless you for today we thank you for such a time like this in your presence it has been a time oh God and we are grateful we pray today that as the word has come may this word take us through this year may this word take us through this week in the name of Jesus 
that the word will not be stolen in any shape or form in the name of Jesus we ask that you preserve the preacher man oh God may you continue to keep him preserve his family in the name of Jesus we pray oh God that our father and our mother are under your shadow in the name of Jesus Christ that no man or woman will do them wrong that you bring them back safely in the name of Jesus we declare that we will not hear any bad news in the name of Jesus we declare your servants are preserved they are protected in the name of Jesus we thank you in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and let the church say amen or oh, let the church say amen before we call Pastor Paul to give us the benediction we want to sow into the word that has come you see, Pastor Paul made a statement and said, when you are a kingdom-minded person, you are not asked or forced to give because we are already given. And I want us to exhibit that right now, wherever you are. I want you to bring that seed and touch the altar, so into the word. What a word that was preached. Kingdom mindset. Come on. Let's sow into this word. Let's sow into the word. And as you are so entitled that I would walk with the kingdom mindset and not just the ordinary mindset. God bless you as you are doing this. God mightily, mightily, mightily bless your life in the name of Jesus. So now we want to welcome Pastor Paul as he brings us the benediction. Put your hand together, church. Let's receive Pastor Paul. Hallelujah. Before I bring the benediction, um, I want to say God bless you to Apostle and Prophetess, amen. Um, we are all watching with pride what God is doing um, and as kingdom people, we celebrate we pray for and we are part of everything that you guys are doing to represent the kingdom that way. Amen? Um, if we are going to show the unity in the kingdom, Jesus Christ told his disciples that by the love you show one another, the world will know that you are from me. And so I encourage you to pray for them. Um, in the kingdom, when we pray for our leaders, it's because of us. The, the Bible says, strike the shepherd and who will flee? The sheep. So when we pray for the shepherd, it's because of the sheep. It's not because of the shepherd, right? So pray for them, support them. Um, that's how the kingdom grows. Is, is Grandma Yvonne in the house? She's not. Okay. Wherever you are, Grandma, God bless you. Um, we see you. We see you, Grandma. Grandma, grandma has been posting now on, on Facebook. Like, you know, our mothers have, have come into this, this, this era. Amen? It's a joy to see. It's a joy to see. Um, so, Apostle and um, Prophetess, God bless you so much um, for the work that you are doing. And I see... DMV is gaining some independence. Come on now. Come on now. You know, when your children grow and they begin to gain their own, it means that growth has come. And may that growth also be multiplied to us. For the benediction, I want to give you a scripture that we are all going to read as our benediction. And I want it to go with you. Amen. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4, NIV, NIV. The posture of the kingdom is humility. And the wages of the kingdom, you can see it there. So let's all read it together. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Father, even as we've heard your word, we submit ourselves to the humility of posture with reverence to Jesus Christ our King as we walk in the fear of the Lord may the wages 
that come with humility and the fear of the Lord be our portion. May the riches that come from the king be our portion. May the honor that is bestowed on the royal family of the king of kings be our portion. May life be our portion. Father, cause your face to shine upon us. Cause your peace to envelop us. Write your love and your word on the tablets of our heart. Seal us with the stamp of the Holy Spirit and mail us to the world to be an influence in this kingdom year and cause us to take off bringing glory to you and you alone. Shall we share the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Somebody shout a big amen.